Welcome to the Talk With Clouds podcast. Your host is Katie Ann, an island girl on a journey with her guests to learn about their backgrounds, businesses, passions, experiences, life lessons, and wins. Come and laugh, cheer, learn, and plan with us. My friend, take some time to come and talk with Clads. Hello, world. Welcome to Talk with Clads. My name is Katie Ann. And today we have a special, special, special podcast uh, for you. I went to Dream Chasers Radio and we did an interview with host Yaya Diamond. So Yaya, thank you so much for doing the interview and for interviewing me. I had such a fun time. And this uh, podcast was talking about uh, CLADS Resources and Consulting or HR Consulting and Conflict Resolution Business and the services that we offer in my journey into owning my own business and also pursuing my passion in HR. So fun experience and I am so happy to share with with you. And don't forget to go visit Yaya Diamond on her platform, Dream Tracers Radio. And the video will also be up on YouTube. And I'll be sure to share that on my website and on my social media. So you can also, if you're visual and you want to see the interview, you'll get to see the interview. So take a listen. I want to welcome you to Dream Chasers Radio with me, your host, Yaya Diamond. What's up, peoples? How you doing? It is a great day. Yes. I'm excited. I'm excited. Okay, so I am a very big advocate for customer service, HR, conflict resolution. I don't want to have problems with you. I really don't. I don't like problems with people. I don't have no problems with people. And usually when I do have a problem with people, I revert back to say, okay. And that's all you get from me. Just, okay. Because I don't like it. If I can talk through with somebody, okay, without a conflict or wait, and then talk through it, that's optimal. But these people do it for a living. They do it for a living. I love it. I love it because then now, you know, just I have a problem with somebody in a business industry or somewhere, you know, HR, I just call them. It's like, yeah, okay. Um, You'll be hearing from my company. (laughs) And I walk away. Ms. Pinard, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to, to be a part of your show today. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, okay. 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 I know this wasn't something that just like popped in your brain. You know, you know we're going to handle conflict resolution. We're going to, we're going to be the people that handle all of these problems. How did that happen for you? How did you find yourself in this business? Um, I just kind of stumbled into it. It wasn't something that was planned. Uh, for 2020, a lot of us were home or working from home because of COVID. Um, and my background is, um, I have over 10 years HR. And I also, I'm pursuing a PhD in conflict resolution. So I come about with a vision board planner that's called Footsteps to My Vision. And it pretty much walks you through goal planning and um, doing smart goals and so forth. And I just didn't want to to just have like a regular planner or just like a standard, just a planner by itself. I wanted to have services to go with um, the planner. And so I was like, well, since HR is my background, let me not, why not do HR? And then in speaking to one of my professors, she's like, well, hey, you are in this whole PhD program about conflict resolution. And you have this unique background where HR typically in a workplace environment, you are involved in conflict and Mm -hmm. day to day conflict happens. We're just different. So we, so I said, okay, let me just put all the things together, HR conflict resolution and the planner. And that's how everything just kind of came about. Wow. Wow. Well, congratulations on all of that. I mean, PhD girlfriend, I wouldn't go back to school right now. I can't do it. I have no attention span. I would be like all over the place. I think I have like adult ADHD. I just want to, I just want to know about it and then, and be guy. Okay. Bye. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm still questioning that decision, but you know, I, I, <laughs> it's, 
It's hard. I'm not going to say it's easy. It's it definitely mm. it's as a non-traditional um, student. Yeah. Yeah. I was never traditional. I mean, where, why? Okay. So let me ask you a question. All right. So this is like right now, this is the biggest question in my brain. What made you go back to school and get it and think that you were going to go ahead and get the PhD? Because I know you're in it now, but what was it that inspired you to do it? Uh, I love learning. So the, it, it, it was more like, what's next for me? Mm -hmm. I wanted to be Growing up, I, I used to watch, um, uh, what's his name? Matt Locke. I wanted to be an attorney original, originally. And I, I realized that I was a little bit older to be going back to school for law school. And, you know, it, it didn't work with my family life because like there has to be some balance. So I decided, well, why not just go for something that I also love, which is just, you know, that's the end product, which is, which is a PhD. I gotcha. I gotcha. So your family life, everything, and you know, law, I went to law school. They said I was too happy and that I would ruin my life. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I don't think I'm going to do that. So, but I mean, I understand where you're coming from. I mean, going back to school and there, and, and mind you, there have been so many different people that have went back to law school in their fifties their sixties their seventies, and even into their eighties you know, just to go back and do something before, you know, before it's this time to leave this earth. So I definitely understand where you're coming from. Life is short, you know. So yeah. tell me about your services, because I mean, you do so many different things and you're going to school, you're going to be a doctor. <laughs> so it's going to be Dr. Pernard, right? And, and and I'm just, I'm I'm loving it. Yeah. Well, I, I'm not so much tied into like the title of the Dr. Pinard because I, I still want, um, obviously like it make, it does make you look good that you're Dr. Pinard, um, quotation mark, mm -hmm. but I, I still want to be known as um, Katie Ann or people just say special K, you know, as, as, a, as a running joke um, that I'm approachable, but I'm also an expert in my area. Mm -hmm. uh, for the services that we offer, we offer for the individuals, we do resume writing, um, we do career coaching, we offer career coaching services, um, and pretty much just prep you for the next step if you're, you're re-entering the workforce, or you know, you're passively looking for that new job, um, what are some things that you can put on your resume to make you stand out, how to dress professionally, I, I hate to say dress professionally, but we are judged whether we we like it or not, and so how does how just to be the top contender for that role, uh, that next level for the individual um, side, and then for the employer side, we offer a a, a wide spectrum of services. Uh, we do payroll, uh, we'll do policies, um, we'll do a lot of recruitment because we know that right now there's a big. Um, gap in the workforce you know no one really wants to work so we'll go and find that candidate for you wow uh, and then we we also on the conflict resolution side we do um career um coaching mm -hmm. having those tough conversations identifying the types of conversations that you're having and some leadership development i love it okay so let's go back because uh, you are saying and then this is so true a lot of people are, are out of work right now most people don't I'm, I'm not going to say most people, I'm going to say there's people that want to work and there's people that don't want to work. There's people that just yeah. lost their job. There's people that, you know, furlough, never got back, their business closed, they closed their business. So you literally help them to reestablish their, their themselves back into the workplace. Yes. So if that's if they want to, because all the people, gotcha. they're starting their own business mm -hmm. and we can also offer services, but then they would switch to the employer if they're looking to, to get staff for their current businesses and also what the regulations are for their, their businesses. Mm -hmm. But if you are an employee, let's say you're just, you're a new grad, you're leaving school and you're like, okay, I don't know, like I want this job, but I don't know how to write a resume we can coach you through that process. We'll write the resume for you. We'll prep you. We'll do like a, a mock interview mm -hmm. just to, to kind of get the nervousness out of, out, out of when you're interviewing. Mm -hmm. And then um, also, you know, any tips, any tips that you, you, you may have like uh, questions. Cause a lot of times, you know, questions that people don't want to ask, we'll, we'll phrase it um, in a way that would be more diplomatic when you're interviewing. 
Right, right. What about those people that have been working for themselves all this time and now they don't want to open up a business, but they have so many skills and they didn't realize, they don't realize what they have. They don't realize their skill set. Do you work with those people to get them a good resume? Yes, we do. So we'll look at the job that you're um, trying to accomplish. The skill sets that you have that are sometimes not everything is captured, be it in education, but also in life experience. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll, we'll phrase it in a way that it matches the role and that you stand out to those employers. And sometimes we'll make those phone calls if we have those connections because networking does help. It does. It does. You know, I was just I was just thinking that because, you know, there's a lot of people that lost their jobs, but not only that had to close their businesses. So now they're finding themselves having to either, you know, unemployment might have run out. Um, they might be on their last, you know, savings leg or whatever the case may be. And they don't know what they can do. <laughs> they just don't know what they don't think they can do anything. You know, maybe they ran a bakery for the last 20 years and the bakery closed down, but those sets of skills that they had to run that bakery can yeah. run someone else's business. They just don't realize it. Yeah. And it, and that's where that, that conversation comes in as to like, tell me about your background. Like what were some things that you did? You running that bakery, you had to keep your books ahead so that there are some accounting skills. Did you have employees? Did you do any types of training? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's how we apply it to the role that you're looking for. Now, with that being said, I also will be realistic with you in terms of what, what because sometimes you may have to take a little a step back to move forward. And yeah. so having those transparent conversations with, with the candidate or my, my customer saying, hey, um, how about like, if you take a little step back for this role that gets your foot in the door, show your, your skill set so that way, you know, and have that transparent conversation with the employer saying, this is what my, my future goal is. Definitely. Definitely. Wow. 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 Okay. So not only do you do that, but you do conflict resolution In what areas do you do that? I mean, is there like a certain criteria you just can't come because you have a problem with your cousin? I mean, you know, you, you see what I'm saying? It's like, it's gotta be, it's gotta be something business, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, you know what? That that I mean, I I I would refer you well to someone that does. <laughs> right? But our focus is is more so work like conflict resolution and mm -hmm. handling those. It could be peer to peer conflict. It could be um, leadership, um, and then just training on those skill sets um, needed to hey identify what type of conflict am I having and the types of you know conversations. Like, is this a difficult conversations because we'll just fall into a conversation and not know how to navigate that path. Um, so we, we coach on those skill sets. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And then you do have something else that you do coaching. Tell me about that. So the coaching um, goes for the peer to peer, you know, an organization or a business can bring us in to discuss, okay, we want to know how to have a difficult conversation. This is someone that we're promoting or there's conflict um, between our group. So we start by the process of having one-on-one -on -one interviews mm -hmm. um, with each person based on what, what the, the ultimate goal of the organization is. And then we'll, we'll, we'll facilitate team events to kind of harmonize um, the team or the workforce. I like it. You know, HR, all of that stuff, I mean, it just, it all depends on just rules and regulations, but it also depends on if you can get the people to actually like work together good. I mean, what, what do you suggest to other companies or people coming into, you know, the workplace or people leaving the workplace to go into their own thing? What do you say about this and how have you been instrumental in helping people do this? Well, I one of the first things I like to say is that we put the human in HR. So you have to realize that we're human beings and we are diverse in cultures, backgrounds, um, you know, or beliefs. And so we, it's, it's easy to say to respect it, but I think organizations need to, to really, even if you are a, a very, very small mom and pop show is to embrace diversity. I think it starts there. And having those conversations and not ignore, you know, ignoring something, ignoring the problem doesn't make it go away. So start by we're human, we're, we're going to view things differently, but you also need to address whatever is, is going on. And so for my footprint, I'd like to say 
is that I, I believe that everyone's belief should be embraced and respected, even if I don't agree with it. And so that approach has allowed me to be very successful in my career thus far. Wow. Well, I'm on your website and I want to make sure that everybody knows that the website is going to be in the description box below so that you guys can go ahead and visit it yourself. But I, I what I love about the website is that it's just really, really, really straightforward. OK, but I, I wanted to go to all of the, the services that you have. So and I want to let people know that what we've talked about is just the tip of the iceberg today. OK, because homegirl got it going on. All right. I'm just going to say that doctor. Doctor, not yet going on. I'm, 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 I'm getting used to it I'm getting used to it thank you you're putting it out in the atmosphere thank there you, you so much there you go doctor there you go all right so you got conflict resolution services conflict resolution training tell me about that so the con the, the training is 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 pretty much what I discuss about having the going over the skill sets that we need we can facilitate it via virtual or in person um and that's where we basically take, do like an intake of what your needs are, and then we customize the training to what your needs are for your organization. So some people, it maybe you know we can do group group, and it could be a group session, and it works well. But it may be more you know we have to do a little bit more coaching, one on one, and that is the better option for the organization. So that's pretty much um, what that entails but it's going to be different for every employer. Right, 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 okay. So you got the uh, workplace conflict resolution as well, uh, which is something we already talked about and we touched on a little bit. Conflict coaching, what, what is that? Conflict coaching, how, how do you do that? So conflict coaching, it, it's, it's pretty much, um, let's say um, employee A, employee B, they're having an issue and I, everyone is instrumental in their organization. So organization, the business reaches out and say, you know, I need these two employees, but I, they cannot work together. No matter what we do, employee A doesn't like employee B, how do we get them on the same path? Mm. And that's where we come in, where we meet with employee A, we meet with employee B, we meet with the the um, leadership for the organization because at the end of the day, if you have a group of employees that cannot work cohesively, it affects your your bottom line, right? Oh, yeah. You know, so okay. you you want you know I like to say satisfied employees. If as a business owner, that that determines if the person is going to stay. It costs three times more to recruit for a person and replace a person than to keep them. So we have those conversations and then we build a plan going forward of how to address it. Nice, nice. So this is really good because I mean, a lot of businesses don't have this. They, they're doing this themselves, you know, but you can do this for them. You can step in and become that role, become that, that those people that, you know, HR that people look to uh, for that company. And this is, this, that's essential, especially if you're, you know, if you're running your own business and you have a very limited amount of time. Perfect. Perfect. So, all right. So you have uh, leadership development workshops. I'm going to just go down the line because we can't really discuss everything, but I'm just going to say leadership development, development workshops, resume writing. We talked about that career coaching workforce planning, payroll administration, which is big because, you know, you don't want to owe the IRS, y'all. Okay. Benefits and compensation planning, employee incentive programs. We need to talk about that because I think that that right there is like the big, oh, I just, I want benefits. What kind of benefits do I have if I'm going to do this job? You know what I mean? People are looking for something more than just a job. They're looking for a career. They're looking for benefits for their family, health, health benefits. They're looking for all these. So the employee incentive programs, tell me about that. So the employee incentive program, that could be benefits and benefits could be a wide variety of, of things, right? You have your, your traditional benefits, health, uh, health benefits, um, PTO, 401k. So that's something that we negotiate because that is like a, a cost to the employer. But then we also look at well, the well-being of the employee overall, right? 
like mentally do you want to be there are you satisfied with being there so we also look at recognition what type of recognition programs do you offer for your employees um what type of like what type of incentives like if if you know some if it's a place where it could be something as simply as free parking Mm. So, um, well, your parking should be free if you work anywhere. I'm just saying that, but some places <laughs> it's not. <laughs> You'd be surprised to have that premium parking spot is such a big deal. You know what yes. I mean? So, and and just like a, a, a free lunch or food truck. So we look at what you can offer and also free things that are out there and resources that you can offer to your employees. And then we put that together, we plan that together and put it together for you so you can offer it to your employees. Nice. That's really good. And I like it that, you know, the, the actual owner or the manager doesn't have to do that. They can reach out to you guys and get that and, and get that done. So you have HR policy manuals. Oh, nobody wants to write a manual. I am telling you those things. Oh my gosh. You do that? Yeah, so we do HR. Um, we'll we'll go in and do your employee handbooks for you based on whatever state you're in. I'm um, just making sure that it it you know it meets whatever the, the federal and state mandates are, and we also make sure that it is in it's worded that employees can actually read it and understand it. So, and I think that's very something that's very important because how many times do you read your employee handbook and you're like, uh, you know, crickets? Yeah. Yeah, let me call HR. No, your, your stuff to be, everybody should understand what you're putting out there. It should be very, very, very simple. So we simplify it, but we make sure it meets all the state and federal federal regulations. That's, oh girl, right there. That's it. I mean, if you only did that, that's enough. <laughs> that right there, girlfriend. Oh my gosh. Why? Why, why are you doing that? Just, I'm thinking, why are you doing that? That is very hard. Yeah. Cause I love HR. You know, HR is my passion. So um, anything that I can do that, it, that I, that is HR, you know, mm-hmm. you find me doing it. Wow. Wow. Hey, I, I gotta do, I gotta do it. <laughs> because, girl, I'm telling you, H, the, the freaking HR policy manuals. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, no, I couldn't do it. Okay. So let's go back into something I can do training and development. Now that's something that that's just, oh my gosh. Okay. So the biggest thing I have about training and development is customer service. Do you do the one-on-one training and also the group training so that they know how to treat the customer and each other? Yes. And, um, training and, you know, it has to be, everyone learns differently. Some people are like, they like to touch. Some people like to see people like to hear. So we, we tailor the training to the individual. And then we try to make sure that we offer it in various ways so that it's also accessible to the employee at any time. Cause sometimes, you know, like you may be at work, you want to listen to something, you know, if, if it's something the company allows, then we'll try to tailor it for, for the um, organization that way also. Now, the other thing that I, I put into the same category as HR policy manuals is health, safety, and legal compliance. <laughs> this is another one. <laughs> if I needed to do it, I wouldn't. I'm just going to say, no, no, I'm, I'm hiring yeah. somebody. Uh, we need a budget or we're not doing this at all. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and and that, I mean, isn't that state to state too? I mean, it, it differs. Like it, it, it is state to state. And that's where it's really important and crucial. I know a lot of people, um, people, they don't really value HR in those, in, in that aspect, but that's where you should have a really, really good HR um, individual be someone that you you have in your organization or someone that you've outsourced those services to um, really leading you on the right path because that's where um, the government will come in and fine you if you're not if you're not compliant. Thank you. I'm just saying, I'm giving you all the props. I'm, I'm just <laughs> all the props, all of it, because those two. I mean, everything else, you know. Yes, it's tough. It's not. It's not easy to do any of those. But when it comes to HR policy manuals, legal, health, and safety, all that stuff, government will come in and just take your business away, sue you, take all of your stuff everything down to the underwear if they could i'm not gonna yeah. lie and and then you'd be left with nothing yeah you know i mean yeah you you're doing it girlfriend my my the future doctor <laughs> <laughs> the 
<laughs> Miss Miss Panoy, I want to thank you so much for being on the show. You know, it's just it, you said that it was just something that you did that you kind of stumbled upon, and then all of the services that you're studying now, and then that you know of, and that you have expertise in. You're um, you know, you've been guided into doing this. What kind of a suggestion do you give to people that don't know their worth? They don't know that they can do this, but now that they've seen you, they've seen the things that you do, they think they can. What do you say to those people? Um, do it. You know, the, I, I had a friend once that um, he was running a races and, you know, he was just running the races and I'm like, the, like he'll do marathons and so forth. And I said to him once, I'm like, you know, like how do you just have that stamina? Um, how do you do it? Cause it's something I want to do. And I, he, he just said, do it. Like if it's something that you're passionate about, just go ahead and do it. Find the resources, network with local organizations, um, join mentorship groups. I know like some, uh, they, the government, look at the small business association, they offer mentorship for new businesses and find those resources, go to Facebook, go to Instagram, join niche groups if you can, um, do your research. I'm not just saying to just jump into it because you wanna also take a calculated risk, but mm -hmm. just go ahead and do it because you don't wanna, no one lives a life regretting, oh, I wish I worked harder. They, yeah. they yeah. regret what they, that they did pursue their passion. So I, I say, go ahead, do it. Wow, wow. Well, where can people find your website? I wanted to make sure that I didn't say it because I wasn't sure if it was initials or do you pronounce it? <laughs> so it is called Clags Resources. It's www.kladzresources.com. And we're also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, um, you'll find us on, on all that. Our telephone number is also 561-801-0093. And we'll happily um, have a consultation with you or set up a consultation um, with you when you give us a call. Definitely. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Pernard. Okay. I'm going to put it out there. The future doctor. Putting it out you know, in the universe. That's right. That's right. Why not, man? I tell you, you're working hard. And I know. <laughs> Uh, I've, I've seen people go through master's degrees and pulling their hair out, not literally, but almost, okay. It's not easy. And I want to commend you for doing that and going back to school and getting your doctor's degree, but you didn't have to because you're amazing just the way you are. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I also do it for my kids because, you know, if they see mommy doing it. They know that they can do it too. Yeah. So being that role model that they don't have to look at anything else but they have a live one right in front of them that's it that's it wow wow well thank you so much for being on the show you have to let us know when you graduate and get your doctorate degree so we can change the name on this uh episode right here to dr pernard i'm just saying okay so that we can be you know politically Hopefully correct. Right in the next year we're there so i'll definitely reach out but thank you so much for having me on Awesome. Awesome. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. Don't forget, we're going to have all that information in the description box below so that you can go ahead and check out these services for your business or for you. If you're changing, you know, professions and you need a professional resume, you just don't know what you can do. You know, you're pretty smart, but you just don't know how smart she can point out how smart you really truly are. Let them take care of you. If you need that service, again, it's in the description box below. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. And don't forget to dare to be different. Until next time. Bye, guys. Bye.
want to provide a memorable experience at your event, book Pin Bounce at 561-727-5488. Pin Bounce offers bounce houses, cotton candy machines, tables, chairs, and other event services in Palm Beach County, Florida. We offer all you need in one place. Follow us on social media using at Pin Bounce and to book your event, call us at 561-727-5488. Remember, we put the P in party with the pin bounce touch. Go pin bounce! Clad's resources and consulting values its customers. Our planner footsteps to my vision is a 13 month planner that can be used for five years. It walks you through SMART goals, SWOT analysis, action planning, and holds you accountable through three monthly check ins. We work only with top quality materials, innovative designs, and verified suppliers, which are guaranteed to deliver to our high expectations because when it comes to our customer satisfaction, there's no room for compromise. Made with high quality PU leather and paper planner helps you focus on achieving your goals by giving you a sense of personal and professional satisfaction. Some of the amazing features of this product Vision Board Planner, Luxury Pen, 8GB USB Flash Drive, Wireless Mouse, Ultra Elegant Packaging Box, available in five stunning colors, black, red, gold, pink, navy blue. Material, PU Leather, 13-month planner, elastic band for easy handling. Our Footsteps to My Vision is available at Amazon, Facebook, Instagram, our website, and at Walmart. You may also follow us at www.cladsresources.com, Instagram, Clads Resources, Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Clads Resources forward slash. Thanks for listening. Find us on social media at Clads Resources and online at www.cladsresources.com. Our planner, Footsteps to My Vision, is also located on our website or on Facebook, Instagram, or Amazon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and check back weekly for new episodes. Until next time, keep creating your footpath to your vision.